Hello everybody, I am Jerry Ross, a genie vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to Relative Race Season 7, Episode 8. Before we do jump into the video, please be sure to give this a thumbs up, it really does help me out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications on future videos. But now, with all of that fun stuff said, let's go ahead and watch the video. Oh. Okay, what's here? All right, I see that one, two, one, two. Yes, we got to a relative's house. I'm so happy. Pulling up to the house, I looked at my brother. I, I didn't really know what to expect, but I just had this feeling like Sir. this relative was going to be a really big deal. That is so great, but I, I thought she was Ruth Ann again. Their, their aunts look so much like the photos that they've been shown of Ruth Ann. So I guess, it, you know, it's just that family look alike. Look at you. <laughs> Hi, how are you? You guys look so handsome. <laughs> You're so big. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at you. It's so hard to explain when you meet someone that you've kind of been waiting your whole life to meet. You want to cry, you want to scream, you want to just, you just want to explode inside. And then being able to hold them and hug them and kiss them, it just makes, it just makes you just happy. I'm like in total shock. Yeah, How, uh, How are you? How are you <laughs> I'm good, gosh. Oh, great. thank you. You do too. You get so big. I remember when you were just a little baby. <laughs> it's been a very long time. Yeah, yeah. I had to step back and pause and go, whoa, like, this is my mom's sister, you know? And that to me was like, oh my gosh, like, what do I say? What do I do? Like, I have so many questions. But all that kind of went away the moment she hugged both of us. And I was like, okay, it's a safe place. Oh gosh, you guys look like you look like family. You really do. I know it's hard to believe, but I got some pictures to show you. We're gonna go over some things, and wow. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. So I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> I know it's so much. Guys, wanna come in? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'd love yeah to. Let's do it. Seven, three, five. This one. Seven. Pull in, Jeremy. Who's she meeting? I love you, but not when I'm navigating them. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. That's so. That's so funny. Navigating a new city on the clock is incredibly stressful. But when we pull up to a relative's house, all that goes away, and it's just an incredible feeling. Hello. Oh, is that a brother? How's it going? How are you? Nice Hi. to meet you both. Nice to meet you. I'm Dave. This is Whitney okay. Huxley and Briley. Huxley and Briley. Who are you related to? Monica. Okay. How are we related? My father is your mother's half brother. So oh, I'm your cousin. Oh, no. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you guys. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I'm David Drayheim, and I am Monica's first cousin. Yeah, so excited. excited. Yeah, I am. I'm very excited to meet you and get into some conversation. Yeah, I got to figure out all this relationship. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Right, me too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so. I love it, I love it. 49, 10, 11. No stop sign, right? Keep going. Yeah. 49, 7, 49, 6, right here. I think it's going to be your dad. Okay. I think it's going to be your dad. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, never mind. Hi, I'm Sean and never this is mind. Casey. Hi. I'm David. This is my wife, Brittany. Nice to meet you guys. How are we all related? 
Casey. Yeah. I'm actually related to Sean. <gasps> really? Oh! How so? I am your cousin on your father's side. Really? That is so cool. Yeah. That is great. They do awesome. kind of look alike. Well, so great to meet you. Yeah, so great to meet you, too. You. Family's always been very important to me. Even as you get kind of more extended out, I think it's valuable to know as much as you can about your family history and to get to know more people that are connected to you. Oh, that's so Philly. That's so Philly. Uh, <laughs> really makes me want to go to get a cheesesteak right now. Go get a cheesesteak, get a nice red Philly birch beer. Oh, yeah. We had a really rough time navigating the streets of downtown Philly. Yeah, we finally found our relative's address, but we had to wind through all these downtown streets to get there. Not a good day. Yeah. Right, right. Oh gosh, yeah, there that relative literally is in like South Philly. Wow. I mean that has gotta be some of the hardest play like one of the hardest places to navigate. Cause I mean Philly is such an old city. I mean basically any of the big cities, you know, Philly, Boston, New York, uh Pittsburgh too, but you know, it really depends on what neighborhood you're in. But Philly, if you're in downtown Philly and especially South Philly, it's just all like this, but there's a lot of good bakeries. Definitely got to go down to the Italian market. Got to get cheese steaks, although you're going to get 20 different answers if you ask 20 different Philadelphians on where to go get your cheese steak. I say Sonny's. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll stop talking about Philly. <laughs> As you're running down the sidewalk, immediately I see a woman I knew right away. <laughs> That, that's the other sister that's gotta be. Jennifer Willis. I'm 32 years old and I am Elizabeth's sister. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Let me see. You know, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. You sound just like me. <laughs> <laughs> when I first saw her running down the street at me, I thought she looks like us. And to see that and to feel that and like to hug her and finally touch her and like feel her and smell her and like she's real and she, she's my sister. And, it was, it was beautiful. It was great. Then please introduce me to my This is Kaori. She's 14. She's my oldest. This is Cammy. She's eight. Are you? Did she just curtsy? <laughs> Did the younger one just curtsy? So in addition to meeting my sister, I got to meet her two beautiful daughters, my two wonderful nieces, Kaori and Cammy. I know that they're going to keep me young. I love their energy, their spirit, their light, their joy. It's going to be a lot of fun spending time time with them. <laughs> How long have you guys lived here? We live like we just live in Bethlehem. We just up the road. It'll be so close. Right. I know. <sighs> this is awesome. This is so awesome. Our Aunt Bobby invites us in uh, to sit down and learn more about our mother, Ruth Ann, and why we were given up for adoption. You know, our past wasn't super easy, and, you know, there wasn't a lot of money, and we're, you know, in our childhood. Mm -hmm. And so for Ruth, you know, she had a lot of um, uh, some, some mental issues, as well as she had problems learning things, so she had some learning disabilities as well. So for her to have four kids would have been very very difficult and you you boys were just um you were sick you needed somebody who could take care of you properly um so the state decided that it was best if she gave you guys to somebody who could properly take care of you and, and it wasn't something she wanted to do it really wasn't she it crushed her soul and to this day she's still you know not able to cope with it you know in her mind the only way she could cope and it's to just pretend like you never existed. But it, it just, it ruined her in a way that if you saw it, you would understand. 
The thing that stuck with me the most was when our Aunt Bobby said that our mother, how much she loved us and how much she missed us and what she did to herself because of us being gone. That really made her. Alrighty, guys, come on in, have a Thank seat. You. Dave brings us inside, we sit down, and we learn a little bit more about how we're connected as family. So I'm right over here. This is Dwayne. And Dwayne would also be your grandpa. And he's your yep. grandpa. And he's my grandpa. Yep. Okay. You're younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> so Louise and Dwayne. So they're half first cousins. My mom, Robin. And then Robin had me. That's me, Monica. Oh, there we go. That's funny. I love it. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know exactly how vast our Dreheim tree truly was, and it's nice to get a little more information. So, wait, that had her father's name. I don't remember the story with her father. I think I'll have to go back. I don't know if they've mentioned it or if I, if I just don't remember, um, but... Yeah, I, I need to look back. For some reason, I can't remember any mention of her father, what the deal with that was. About that today. To be honest, I really don't know a lot okay. because the portion where the little bit of Dreheims that I did know in Northern California, mm -hmm. I only lived there for about nine years in the beginning of my life. So yeah. we kind of moved away and I haven't had a connection since. Uh, so a couple of days ago, I got to meet our dad, Jerome, for the first time. And like, we were just a bucket of tears. He showed me some of your baby pictures. Uh, and it was like, I was so excited, I could tell Right away, like, I mean, you could see similarities in, in all of us. I could see pieces of myself in, like, each one of you, between you and, and Helica and JJ. And, um, like, you know, like, all the cheeks and stuff. <laughs> Definitely the cheeks. Definitely the cheeks. Even then, just through the photos, you got a sense, I got a sense that I could just, I knew I was going to connect with you guys right away, and I was just so excited. It's a blessing. I'm so excited to have a sister we already feel the same things. Like I'm listening to her speak, and I'm like, I don't have to say a word. She, she, she gets it. So, it's it's a beautiful thing to have her close. So we've we've been waiting for you, and we're so blessed that you found us. Yeah. And we're so happy to have you here. It means a lot to us, especially the the girls. They're like, we have another TT. <laughs> and then the fact that you're so close too, because I really, you know, all of my our family is in West Virginia. Right, right. So now I'm like, I'm not alone. Like right. my sister's here. So it's awesome. That's so awesome. So I was just going to show you kind yeah. of our yeah. shared ancestor and absolutely a little bit of information here. Yeah, um, we actually have the obituary for our great great grandfather. Oh, wow. that is so cool. Herbie Chapman. He lived to 104 wow. after moving to California when he was 30. For the first time ever, I got to see a photo of my great great grandfather Herbie and his wife Mary, which. So if that is both of their great-great-grandparents, that would mean that they're third cousins. Yeah. It was really cool seeing the, the tie that, that binds us together. There were two of uh, four sons of um, Herbie's and uh, my family, and I guess your family too. I didn't know that previously, but they had stayed out in California. Yeah. Um, and they kind of has moved towards the Midwest <laughs> yeah. over time. Yeah, yeah my, my family's kind of spread out over the whole country at yeah. this point <laughs> but yeah originally a lot more of them kind of lived on the on the west coast yeah where in california where you're from okay well i spent most of my life growing up in monterey but i was actually born down in san diego on a military base and uh my my father phil he was in the military in the marine corps uh he was a huey pilot and uh, when i was uh, about four and a half years old there was a really horrible accident where uh, the Long story short, the, the rotor basically had a had a sea, it seized up in midair and the helicopter exploded. My dad died instantly. Oh my goodness! Um, not having my father oh. around, you know, definitely left me with not questions, but there were things that I you know wished I could have had a dad for. But as I said, my my grandfather was there very earnestly, you know, and so I really, I ultimately don't feel like I missed out on anything, other than not having my dad. So I actually spent most of my most of my childhood with my grandpa Chuck being uh, kind of basically standing in for my dad. I think tonight was meaningful for Sean 
in uh, meeting more of his broader family. And when he shared the story of uh, losing his father at a very young age, um, it seemed to me like uh, we were able to connect a little bit. And I think that learning more about, for me, learning more about that part of the family was very touching. I'm very happy I met a relative today. You know, family is very important, and so it's wonderful to add more. I've had cerebral palsy my entire life, and it's affected my coordination and my ability to walk. And I've always wondered in the back of my mind if I was born with it or it was a result of childhood trauma. I have to ask, um, did I, was I born with CP? Um, you know, I don't know. I've always had a, a big question of where my CP came from. And I didn't really, I was told by my adopted mother that the CP was due to uh, childhood abuse. Here's, cause here's, here's the tough thing. My, my adopted mom said that there was, um, there were certain things that happened when I was a baby that caused the cerebral palsy. I don't know if it's something that happened with Ruthie or her. Well, nothing happened with Ruth. You weren't with her long enough for anything like that to happen. There is no way that, and you weren't in her care long enough. Yeah, what a heavy thing to weigh on your mind. Did your mom cause the thing that's, you know, affected your life in a way forever? So, yeah, that's that's got to be a tough thing to think about and probably relieving to know. By the time you came from the hospital, there was no time for her to do anything. That would be any cause for anything like that. Doesn't it feel good to know the truth, Nacho? That makes me so happy because I knew in my heart, I've always known in my heart that Ruthie would never hurt my brother or me. Regardless of how it happened, I did know, I did understand one thing, and that was that my mom didn't do anything. And that's something that I have felt to be true in my heart all along, but I just had to hear her say that. It, it meant a lot. Teams Black, Blue, and Green all hold two strikes. And with only one day left, any one of them could be going home tonight. Eight days into relative race. And once again, I'm very happy to see all four teams with us. Exactly. Today, maybe the most stress-filled day for each of you because every team, with the exception of Team Red, has two strikes. Team Green, Monica and Megan. Today's challenge was all about communication. So how did you guys tackle that? So <laughs> Megan really killed it in the beginning. And then from there, we just kept talking. I mean, as you can tell, we really like to talk. So it ended up working out really well. But ultimately, all that matters is that you make it safely to a different home each and every day. Casey, when your clock stopped today, you probably assumed, here's another relative of mine. <laughs> I did, um, but we had a really nice surprise, actually. Things got changed up on us a little bit today. I actually got to meet my third cousin, David. Third cousin, that was right. Uh, my dad's side, which is a lovely wifey. Yeah, it's lovely wifey, Brittany. It's really neat meeting somebody from, you know, up the tree a little bit, but then, you know, back down because he's actually... The same age as me, only within a couple months. We're both 32. So it's really cool. It was a real, real exciting treat to get to meet him. Fantastic. Hey, boys, you get back out on the road and you navigate pretty well to another relative. Who did you meet tonight? We got to meet our auntie, Bobby. Hi. <laughs> Look at that wonderful smile. As you meet these family members, are they able to provide answers for questions that you've had your entire lives? I had been, I had a question about my early childhood and what the situation was with my adoption. And 
Bobby, she she answered all of those questions, and a lot of the mystery that was in my heart was just gone. And where there was once like anger and hurt, it's not anymore. Team Green, it's been quite a journey for Monica, and it's been quite a journey for Megan. <laughs> Who did you meet? So today I met my cousin Dave. Hi. <laughs> Dave, it was cool because I actually got to um, give him some answers, which was kind of cool. He didn't know much about that side, and with the uh, brother and sisters that I've met, those are actually his cousins. Yeah, I found well. out I had three more, too. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Dave. Now you guys really need to have that family reunion. Yeah, yeah, no joke there. <laughs> Monica, congratulations on expanding your family once again. We're really happy for you. Liz and Devin, you guys got horribly lost negotiating to your relative's home. But I always ask the same question because I think it's pertinent. Even though you had a tough time getting to the house, was it worth it? Oh, it was worth it 110%. I see this beautiful young woman standing there in red, and her her two daughters also red. And I'm just running and running, you know, because that's the nature of the race. Probably about 20 feet out, she just starts sprinting towards me like we just couldn't <laughs> wait to hug each other anymore. And I, I already knew it was my my sister. So this is my oldest of baby sisters, Jennifer. Oh yay! And her two beautiful daughters. Cammy and this is Kaori. My husband and I, we live, my family, we live about an hour, hour and some change north of here. So to like, like it almost, she's been here like for years. She's been right here. And so to know, like to now know her and her, her family and to know that we're like, we can be so close. It's just, it's unbelievable what, what has, um, how I've been connected and who I've been connected with through the show. and It's just, it's, it's better than anything I could have imagined. It makes it all worth it for us. And I hope that it makes everything that you've gone through the last eight days worth it for each of you. Who will continue on to day nine? Whew, this is the tough part. This Team is the tough part. Team Blue and Team Green. Each of you has two strikes. A strike tonight... And you're out of the race. I'm not going to lie. I really think Team Blue might win this one today. I hope they really do, obviously. But I think they will will get it. I'm sorry, Team Red. Please get the strike today. I want everyone in the day tomorrow. Team Red, you have one strike. Once again, our first place finisher finished under their allotted time. And will win a challenge benefit that will be revealed to them at a later time. Blue. And the team Blue. that has that advantage, finishing two minutes under their allotted time. Team Green. Ooh, <laughs> Team Green. Congratulations, Monica and Megan. So, <laughs> will we say goodbye to Team Black or Team Blue tonight? Please no. Finishing 13 minutes over their allotted time and safe for another day. Casey and Sean, Team Black. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, Team Blue, stay. Team you haven't even met your mom yet. Come on, we need one more episode to meet Ruth Ann. She's got to be the next one. There's one episode left. Red and Team Blue. Team Blue, you have two strikes. You Stick know it through. Strike means. Finishing 14 minutes. Just one minute behind Team Black. Come and on, still Blue. safe, Team Blue. Yes. <laughs> All right. Red, the back streets of Philadelphia really caught you <laughs> and cost you. You finished 40 minutes over your allotted time. And so you have picked up your second strike on relative race. For all of the teams, you've made it this far. Three of you will be headed to day 10. The reality is somebody will be out of the race tomorrow. 
Get some Who's sleep. Gonna be? Think about how you can make tomorrow your best day ever. Because tomorrow is day nine of Relative Race. Good night, everybody, and good luck. <laughs> Relief. Okay. We received our second strike tonight, and frankly, I have mixed emotions about it. So this just means we need to be sharp and ready for tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 no. <laughs> so for being in first place tonight, we win a challenge benefit for tomorrow. We have no idea what it is yet, but we think it will definitely help us. <laughs> second place. Second I know. Place We've been again. second place like almost yeah. every night. If we can so. get second place one more time, then uh, then then we're golden. Yeah. We're all it's a clean slate. Everybody's in the same boat. Do or die. Yeah. What do you think so? Woo! What an episode. Um. You know, it, it's always good. It's, it's I, I, I don't think I've ever come across a bad episode of Relative Race. So happy that all the teams are going to day nine. Really curious who's going out tomorrow. It's going to be somebody. Somebody's going. Um, and then we're going to have a three-team day ten. Now, there's only one day of relatives left, assuming they keep it like all the past seasons, where the last day... They don't meet any relatives. It's just racing. It's basically just a full day of challenges and first one to win or first to complete that wins the entire thing. Um, but I'd love to see them work relatives into that in some way, but I don't know if they will. So day nine tomorrow, or I guess not tomorrow <laughs> right now, but anyway, day nine, we, um, we, we, I really hope that Devin will figure out who his father is. Um, I really hope that the twins will meet Ruth Ann. I mean, it's just like build up nonstop for that. Um, hopefully Casey will meet her dad. I mean, they built a lot of that up in the beginning of the season where they were talking about, or we're not talking about where she was meeting her, her dad's sisters and the cousins, and they were all musical and everything. Then she met her mom's side. Um, so now she needs to meet, her dad, uh, hopefully, um, with Monica and Megan, I'm really not sure what to expect. I, I need to look into the whole thing with what, uh, what the story is with her dad. I don't remember that part. Um, so it might, maybe it'll be something with her dad's side. Um, be kind of cool if it ended up being something for Megan, <laughs> you know, they would have had to pull that out like last minute to figure something out. So we've got a lot of, you know, we've got a lot of people for each team to, to meet really. Um, it's just, you know, who, who will they meet? So next episode should definitely be a good one. Um, I'm really excited. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out, boost me in the algorithm. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.